All right, guys, so yes, we are going to do this a sprint, but before we get started, one of the things we did way back at the beginning was to make a wreck and wreck bracelet. Go get your bracelet. You can't find your bracelets? Get your counters. You can't find your counters? Get your cubes. You have no idea where any of these things are? Get 10 matching some things. Okay? Get 10 of one little thing. Get 10 pennies. Get 10 quarters. Don't just go get the stuff. Go ask somebody. So you, I want you, you need really your bracelet. Your bracelet. If you cannot locate your bracelet, your counters will get the job done. You should have a bag of 10 red and yellow or your cubes as a last resort. You need something. You got to have something. We need to move things around today. So for now, now you're back. You got your stuff. We're going to do our sprints, the first one of the week. It is in your practice book. That is the one, the littlest one, the Starry Night book. I know we haven't used this all week. It's on page number 45. You're going to find the page. Today we are doing addition. And if you notice, it's a little bit longer. So I'm going to give you 90 seconds. I'm going to put 90 seconds on the clock. Let me get the clock going. So, yep, find your page. Don't start until the clock starts, okay? Put 90 seconds on. Here I am. We're going to put 90 seconds on the clock, okay? All right. On your mark, get set, go! just as well as I did that is time let's go ahead and check our work remember correct answers get a check and a little tiny yes wrong answers get an X and just a mental note to come back and check it out practice it some more later so without further ado come on All right, so yes, let's check our work on this addition sprint that we just completed. Four, five, six, ten, seven, nine, three, eight, eight, ten, seven, four, five, six. 10, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, 7, 8. All right, guys, so we're going to proceed to the top of column 2, which the answer to question number 23 is 3, 9, 9, 5, Five, six, four, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, seven, 
8, 8, 9, 10, 10, 9, 10. All right, great job. Put your number correct at the top. And remember, don't, and remember, during live this afternoon, we'll do part B together. And then you can compare to see how you did. Note, number correct and improvement. It's comparing this one and this one, part A and B. So, I hope to see you this afternoon to do that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead with our lesson, lesson and continue with our application problem. That's right, our application problem inside of our learn book where it always is. This is, uh, we're now on topic I. We're not doing word problems today, except of course our application problem, which is on page number 221. We're on lesson 33, topic I, and we're moving on from word problems. Today we're going to be doing a concept which I'll explain after this application problem. Let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so it reads, nine children are playing outside. One child is on the swing. One child is on the swings, and the rest are playing tag. How many children are playing tag? Write a number bond and number sentence. Make a math drawing to show how you know. So number bond, number sentence. We a number bond, a number sentence. Looking at this problem, is it addition or subtraction? Are we starting with the whole or a part? The whole, so it is subtraction, so blank minus blank equals blank right now. Okay, so without me for three minutes and then we will continue. All right, so here we go. Nine children are playing outside. We've already established this subtraction, which means the first piece of information we receive, we are to receive, is our whole. So let's indicate our whole in our number bond as well as our number sentence because this is subtraction. Okay. One child is on the swings, and the rest are playing tag. Okay. So nine children on the playground. One is on the swings. The rest are playing tag. We know how many are in this group. One little swinger, one little swinger girl. You ever seen recess? I'm not gonna show you that right now. Well, I don't know. I did show you Snoopy, so we might see we might see swinger girl, but okay, about her later. <laughs> Maybe later. All right. So one children is on the swing. The rest are playing tag. So nine children on the playground minus the one on the swings equals the rest of playing tag. So nine children. Minus one swinger equals an unknown number of children playing tag. All right, so let's draw a picture to find the missing part. We start with our whole because it is subtraction and we know that there are nine children playing outside. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. Now, let's take away the part we know. That is the one child that is on the swing. I didn't cross her out because she didn't go home. She's just doing something different. And that's cool, too. Everyone doesn't have to play tag. I personally prefer the swings over tag, but that's just me. But how many children did choose tag is the question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry, what? Eight children are playing tag. Eight children are playing tag is the answer to our question. Filling in the current, the, there are no missing numbers anymore. We know the mystery. It has been solved. The mystery has been solved. Eight children are playing tag. All right, good job. So now, as I told you, you do need your bracelets. We're looking at some of the language we are familiar with. 
and how that language translates into number sentences. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Hold on. All right. Here you see your bracelet. So get your bracelet, just like this child has their bracelet. Okay? Here's my bracelet. We're going to separate one white bead from the bunch. Can you hide it? Yep. Hide that bead. Now, how many beads do you have? You have nine because one is away. So ten, so one less than ten is nine. What is that as a number sentence? Mm -hmm. Ten minus one is equal to nine. Okay? So, like I said, one less than ten is nine. As a number sentence, that becomes 10 minus 1 is equal to 9. Let's do it again. Still with your one bead hidden, your current visible beads is how many? 9. Good. What is 1 less than 9? 8. Excellent. And what is that as a number sentence? 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. Good job. All right, this time, I want our starting place to be 6. So hide the other 4. Pretend this is all you have, just these visible 6 beads, okay? No, it's not 10 minus 4. It's just what you see here. 6. What is 1 less than 6? One less than six is five. What is the number sentence to match this? Correct. Six minus one is equal to five. So what we're doing is we're saying that minus one is the same as one less, okay? One less than six is five. Six minus one is five. And the same thing is true every time you move a bead. All right, so starting over. This time. This time. Put all your beads back together. Yes, put all your beads back together. And again, I'm gonna double check my page. I'll make sure I give you the correct information. That's what books are for. <laughs> okay. So we have all our beads back in the middle, which means we have how many beads? All your beads back in the middle means you have 10 beads. Take away, I want you to take away zero beads. Good job. How many beads do you have? 10. Let's turn that into a number sentence. 10 minus zero is equal to 10. So we took away no beads. That has a number value of zero. So 10 minus zero is equal to 10. Good job, let's do it again. This time, starting at eight. So knowing our partner's to 10, that means I want you to hide two. Pretend they don't exist. They're gone, all the way gone. How many beads do we have? Eight, good job. Take away zero. Good. How many beads are left? Zero. <laughs> zero beads are left. <laughs> no. Eight beads are left. Excellent. So eight minus zero is equal to eight. So when I take away nothing from my whole, if I have a whole of eight, I want y'all to see this. My whole is eight. I took away nothing. I put all my pieces together. So my whole is eight. My first part is zero. It has nothing in it, which means I put all of them together in one part. Eight minus zero equals eight. Let's do this again. This time start at 
five. And you knew this was five because all the white beads are hidden. Good. All right, five. Take away zero. Good job. How many are left? Five. Excellent. Let's write a number sentence. Yes, we're still subtracting zero. So five minus zero is equal to five. So minus zero is the same as zero less, which is what we've seen before, which is what our title was today, okay? All right, so we've seen this with our beads. Now let's see this in practice. Can you continue using your beads or counters to model the problems if you need to? Of course, always. That's why I gave them to you to begin with. Let's look in our practice, no, our succeed book, that homework book, and do some practice problems together. This is from the homework assignment for today. Well, the if you were in person, this would be the homework that I would have sent home with you for you to do today when we did our problem set together. We already know. This is page number 138 in the book designed for homework, which is where we get our practice model problems from. Our practice model problems come from here. We are going to write the subtraction sentence to match the five group drawing. Look at this right here. What is the subtraction sentence to match this picture? Okay, take into the rules we know. Whole minus part is equal to parts. Crossing things out indicates subtraction. We've established that. So, what is the whole? Excellent, it is six. Matter of fact, I want a different color. I don't like the way that feels. Y'all just have to deal with me for today. All right, it is six. And how many are crossed out? One. What is six minus one? What is one less than six? Let's do a finger check, just in case you didn't have any other tool. Six minus one. Take away one. One less than six is five. Good job. 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Read the picture in number 10 to me. Remember, we're still doing subtraction. It's already been indicated. So if nothing is crossed out, that means we're taking away how many? Zero. We're taking away nothing. Good. What is the whole? Notice how it's colored so you can see your part, not your parts, I'm sorry, but you can see your five group and so the rest, your five groups. It's colored to depict your five groups, not your parts. Parts are shown by crossing things out. What is the whole? Seven. What are we taking away? Nothing's crossed out. We said that means we're taking away zero. Good. Show me seven. Okay. What is zero less than seven? Still seven. Excellent. Read number 11, please. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, the whole is 9. We see 1 is crossed out, so it's minus 1. 9 minus 1. Take, take away 1 from 9 is 8. Excellent. Nine minus one is eight. All right, let's keep practicing. Yep, we're going to do all these practice. This problem here takes what we've been seeing of our... So first they were like this. Then we straightened it out. Now we're stacking it on top of each other. Does this all still have the same value? Yes, it is still a group of 10, and I split it for some so you can easily see the groups of 5, okay? So as you'll note, we turned it straight up and down. 
We're trying to transition into this representation of a 10 group. We're transitioning from separate individual dots to one stick group of 10. That would be more module two. Like I said, we're shifting into first, more first grade stuff. Yay! All right, so for 12, what is the whole? Correct, the whole is nine. Minus, take away, subtract, how many? Zero, nothing is crossed out. So nine, taking away nothing, is still nine. Our whole is intact, good job. All right, number 13, what is our whole? Let's count them, so it's okay to count them, let's count them. I'm not going to start, at, I'm not going to count all though because I know that this is a five group. I'm going to count on from this being five, six, seven, eight. So my whole this time is eight. And how many are crossed out? One. One less than eight is seven. Eight minus one is seven. Take away one from eight, you are left with Seven. Good job. Okay. Now these ones don't have pictures, but you have to pay attention to read them properly. Okay. Now, mm, now remember, we're only dealing with minus zero and minus one today. So it has to be one or the other. It can't be two, three, four, or five. We're not worried about those today. But you have to read carefully to make sure you're figuring out, am I looking for a part or am I looking for a whole? Because sometimes they will give you both parts and you need to tell me the whole. That's a possibility too. So seven minus something is equal to six. Did I take one away or no? I did. So seven minus one is equal to six. All right. Now pay attention here. See, this is an example where they put it's still the whole, the whole is zero, but how do I have a whole of zero? Because zero is equal to seven minus what? If I want to have zero left, if I want zero left, and I currently at seven, how many do I need to take away to now have zero? All seven, good. Notice we still have a zero or one in that problem, okay? So zero is equal to seven minus seven. Mm -hmm. 8 minus what is equal to 7? I have had 8. I now have 7. Look what happened there. 8, 7. We took away 1. Letter D reads 6 minus is equal to 5. Notice we're moving the missingness around. The missingness. <laughs> the missing piece around. 6 minus... One is equal to five. Good job. Let's. Let's keep going. Eight is equal to nine minus something. Notice what they did here. It's our standard subtraction problem, only instead of starting the same way when we did addition, you could start with the end. Well, it wasn't with it. So this is what we're seeing here, okay? Part is equal to whole minus part. It's the same thing as whole minus part equals part, only we flipped the usual order. It's not incorrect. It's just not what we're used to seeing, and that's okay too. So if 8 as a part is equal to the whole 9 minus the other part, that other part is still, we're trying to make this whole nine, looking at it in a number bond. The whole we said was nine. The part is eight. What is the missing part? One. It is still one. You see how I backtracked to previous strategies? If this current one, thinking about it and just recognizing it, is not where you're at yet, Go back to the number bond. Go back to the picture. Go back to your cubes and your counters. That's what they're for. That's what they're for. I'm adding to your skill set. But if you're being overwhelmed, go back a step and let me know so I can help you. Make sense? Yes? Okay. I think that's enough practice. We did enough practice. Because now you have to do your problem set. <laughs> now you have to work on it on your own.
Your problem set is in your learn book as always, starting on page number 223, more of these minus one and minus zero problems. Some of them you'll need to note, it is written as part is equal to whole minus part. They're still all subtraction problems, all subtraction problems. So part is equal to whole minus part, still the same number bond. Still the same number bond. The rules did not change, okay? All we did was start at the end, which is what we are allowed to do. We are allowed to do that. We've done it before. With addition, you will see it in subtraction. That is your problem set. Work on that. 10 minutes or less. If you finish early, great. Go ahead and complete and submit your exit ticket. Paying attention to how the problems are written. If you have any additional questions, you already know, let me know. And of course, I'm going to help you. But until later, guys.